Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Coming back to you with some piping hot gaming tea. The newest game that was released from Sweet Baby Inc. that was published by Bandai Namco has been an absolute flop. Since its release date on the 17th of October, it's had an all-time peak of 276 players. And I bet you half of those people were either people that were paid to play it or people that were just trolling it. But why did the game flop so hard and is it even really that bad? There's actually layers as to why this game was an absolute failure to launch. But first, I'm going to tell you about the infamous game development company, Sweet Baby, and their absolute psychopath CEO, Kim Belair. The CEO, Kim Belair, has been a hot topic in the gaming community for about a year now, after she openly admitted to, on a amount of occasions, threatening people and departments that she would get them fired and cancel them if they didn't agree to her woke ideologies. Of Sweet Baby Inc. proudly explains the method that she uses to force bosses at game studios to censor, alter, and diversify game projects she feels are problematic, terrify them, aka threaten them with the anger of the cancel culture mob. Okay, let's listen to what's said. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. I literally can't make this up. If they didn't agree to her woke ideologies for storyboards in games, she would go out of her way and use her connections and power to get these people cancelled and fired. And Sweet Baby Inc. isn't a small company. They've worked on some of the biggest titles in the past four or five years, such as God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, and Alan Wake 2, to name a few. So, after fans started realizing that this company that had crazy ways of working in the industry had their fingers so deeply in the political guidance of their favorite games and publishers, a Discord server was made with over 355k people in it. And the name of the Discord server is Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. Like, you know, the thing on Instagram and TikTok, like, OF Detected, Opinion Rejected. And I don't agree with that, but I just think it's a really funny name. So obviously the opinion on everyone in this server is if they see a game that has any kind of connection to Sweet Baby Inc, they're going to reject the game completely. I guess people don't want nuts that force their political agenda onto other people to be making games or to question whether their games has political agendas forced onto them. And I can kind of see where they're coming from in that perspective. Let's bring this back to the game in question though. Unknown Nine Awakening. Sweet Baby Inc didn't just consult on this title. They were the lead architects. I guess the saying goes, don't bite the hand that feeds because we're the ones that are buying these games that you make. And this game flopped in the most spectacular fashion with only 150 people playing on day one of the release. This is literally great. I love when stuff like this happens. I love when you see the massive corporates start to crumble. Actually, Bande did reach out to me individually to play this game. And when I was looking at the trailer, I did really think that it looked kind of like a mix between Forspoken meets Assassin's Creed meets Marvel's Masters of the Mystic Arts. The main character can tap into an unseen dimension called The Fold, where she can go invisible, attack people's astral bodies and force push and pull characters. The game has just been done before, and if we leave out all of the SBI controversy, the mechanics are junky and boring, the faces are clunky, and it feels more like early access gameplay than a full complete game to me. And you don't have to take my opinion on it, this seems to be the overlapping opinion of everyone who's played it in the past 72 hours. If you look at all the reviews on Steam, everyone seems to be having the same idea about this game. The combat is boring. Most of the time you are either punching people or pushing them with your shade abilities. Two, the stealth mechanics are worse than Assassin's Creed 1. I'm not joking. And this game takes a lot of inspiration from the AC games. Me and this person, me and this person. Now I understand the negative comments. The outfit details are good, but the face animation is clunky. Death animation of the enemies are stiff. It feels that the game isn't still finished. So to improve on, AMD should be ashamed in promoting this game. And it's not just these two comments that I pulled up. The overwhelming majority is not happy with this game. These delusional people just don't understand that just because you put in some woke ideologies into a game doesn't automatically make it a bestseller. People don't just play games for storylines. They want to be thrilled. They want to be challenged. And if Sweet Baby Inc. can't do that, then they should just stick to being a consultancy agency. 
The game's budget is currently unknown, but it was definitely in the high eight, low nine ball figures. Bandai was actually promised a huge multimedia franchise with comics, novels, a movie. Did anyone at Bandai think to play this game first? Or were they also threatened by Kim Belair that she'd cancel them too? Well, that dream has completely gone up in smoke for Bandai and I hope they've learned their lesson and that we've learned our lesson that the main takeaway for us is that we, the people, are the ones with the power. If we don't like the direction in which a company is going, fine, we just won't buy your games. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. If we don't like the people who are making these games, fine, we just won't play. After all this has happened, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the new Dragon Age that's coming out on October 31st after how the lead writer and the devs have talked about fans on Blue Sky, but that's a, that's a different topic for another day. I hope you liked today's video guys, and if you did, don't forget to 1. Drop a like, 2. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Shalom!